Folks, let's check out how pressure can affect a rocket's nozzles. Folks, to understand pressure, we're gonna start with a bottle and some water. And we're done. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna poke some holes in this bottle and show you how height affects water pressure. It'll be around 10 centimeters. And now I'm gonna open and take out three pins. Let's take three pins from here. Here's one. Here's two. Here's three. So my three pins are ready. Now we're gonna poke some holes in this bottle. The first pin is in, second pin is in, now let's do the third and final pin. The third pin is in. Folks, I think we're ready for some pressure experiments. All right, folks, so today we're gonna to be talking about how pressure can affect our rocket's nozzles. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we're gonna start with a simple demonstration right here. So right here, we've got some marbles in a container. Now, what is this showing? Well, these marbles are exerting a pressure on the bottom surface of this container. Remember, pressure is force per unit area. So as you go deeper into the box, the pressure on the box increases. Now let's take a more visual demonstration. Here we have an empty glass and we're going to fill it up with some water. So we've got 500 milliliters of water, half a kilogram, and let's go ahead and fill this up. That's done. Now what's happening here? Here we've got a couple of things happening. You've got water exerting pressure on all sides of this cylinder. As you go deeper into the container, if, if you go deeper, then the pressure on the bottom of the can is gonna increase. Why? Well, the formula for pressure is rho GH. So as you increase your height from the top of the water, then the pressure will also increase, and thus the velocity of the water being ejected is also gonna increase. Now we're gonna check that out in action. Here we got a bottle of water. So this bottle has pins in three different heights. Let's check out what heights we put pins on. We put pins at a height of 10 centimeters from the top, 17 centimeters from the top, and 26 centimeters from the top. So let's go ahead and label that. And now we're gonna see that in action. Here I've got, I'm gonna release the pins and you can watch the velocity of the water increase as the pressure increases. Okay, so we're gonna release all three pins at about the same time. Okay, so what are you seeing? The first pin releases barely any water. Let's fix that, but it barely releases any water because there's barely any pressure here. As you increase your height into the water, so does the velocity of the water being ejected out. Because there's greater pressure here, the velocity here is greater than the first pin. And at the very last pin, we have the greatest velocity. Why? Well, we have the greatest pressure, and pressure is proportional to height. So as you increase your height, again, your velocity is gonna increase. Okay, so you can watch that empty out, and now we're gonna go ahead, go to the blackboard, and do some math with pressure. Start with an empty container. So here it is. Just like our bottle of water, this container is gonna be filled up with some elements. So, let's say we've got some spheres, some marbles packed into our container. So here they are, all of these spheres touching each other uh, tangentially. So here's my container. Now as I go deeper and deeper into the container, remember that pressure is going to be proportional to height. So as I go deeper, the, here the pressure will be 
minimal. Here the pressure will be atmospheric pressure. But as I go deeper into the container, my pressure is going to be more than just atmospheric pressure. It's also going to be the pressure exerted by each of these marbles. And as I go to the very bottom of my container, that's where the pressure is going to be greatest. Okay, so now these marbles are not only exerting a pressure vertically, they're also exerting a pressure horizontally. So they're exerting a pressure to the sides of the container. So as you once again go deeper and deeper into the container, the pressure horizontally is going to increase linearly. So there's a horizontal increase in linear pressure. Okay, so now let's go ahead and derive the formula for pressure. We can say that D is equal to M over V. So density is mass per unit volume. Now we're going to solve for M. So M is equal to DV. And now, instead of mass, I'm going to say weight is equal to gamma times my volume. So instead of mass, I've got weight, and instead of density, I've got gamma. Now, gamma, I can write as my density per unit area times the gravitational acceleration. And what's that going to give me? Well, let's see. My density and my, uh, so this is my density, and this is my gravitational acceleration acceleration and what about my volume my volume I can write as the area the area of the bottom of my container times the height of my container right so that's gonna be what the area is gonna be in square meters the height is gonna be in meters so my volume is gonna be in cubic meters so the dimensional analysis works out and so now if I go ahead and plug this formula and this formula back into my volume formula what do I get what do I get for the weight? Well, the weight is going to be what? The weight is going to be, instead of gamma, I'm going to write volume. I'm going to write the area times the height. And so now we know that pressure is force per unit area, right? So if pressure is force per unit area, and my force is my weight, and my area is A, what is my weight? My weight is rho GAH. So rho GAH divided by my area. And so now we're going to cancel out my areas and I'm going to be left with rho g h. And that right there is the formula for pressure. Now we're almost done. Let's take a look what's happening here. Here what I'm doing is I'm plotting my horizontal pressure. So I'm plotting height against my horizontal pressure. So this is pressure horizontally. On the other hand here I'm plotting my height against my vertical pressure which is P sub V. So it turns out that if you divide P sub V and P sub H, it'll always be a constant. So let's write that down. You can say the ratio of the horizontal pressure to the vertical pressure is always a constant. So that means the horizontal pressure is always going to be some constant multiple of our vertical pressure. And we know what our vertical pressure is. Our vertical pressure is rho GH. So that's going to be K times rho GH. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how pressure can affect a rocket's nozzles. Thanks for watching this episode of Rocket Science 101. We'll check you out in the next one.